Off the Shelf. I'm your host, Yvonne Wolf. Today, our returning guest is Glenview author Ray De La Cruz. He wrote a new picture book biography on Cecil Gildote Alvarez. The title is The Philippines is a Stage. This is the third time he is joining us on Off the Shelf. However, it will be different because we have another guest. Joining us from Manila, Philippines, is the book's illustrator, Beth Porocha. Hello, Ray. Hello, uh, Yvonne. I'm glad to be here again for the third time. Yes, and hello, Beth. Hello, um, Yvonne. Yes. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thank you for staying up <laughs> to be with us today. <laughs> yes, now, it's quite late. Right, I bet. And Ray, right how, yes. how did you two meet? I reconnected with uh, Mr. Mitoy Orosa in Manila. And then uh, we talk about children's books. And, you know, Ray, I have a, a friend who's a, a children's book uh, illustrator. And, you know, she did uh, the logo for my company. Maybe you would like to meet her. Of course, I said. And then so, and then it took a while for him to introduce us. But before introducing, introducing uh, when he introduced the two of us, he said, I want you to collaborate on something, okay? So that's what we did. And at that time, Ray, you already knew that you were going to write a third book, right? Uh, yes, I was in the, uh, in the process of uh, writing it, yeah. So how did you do this, uh, coordinate um, this book writing process? overseas? Well, uh, uh, via the internet. <laughs> yeah, via the internet. And, you know, we, we, we talk Ray on FaceTime. Ray calls me like, every now and then, yeah. And then uh, we would, uh, uh, then I, you know, I, 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 gave, I, I gave her a copy of the, uh, the manuscript constantly, mm -hmm. yeah. So you're changing the manuscript, updating it all the time while she's visualizing the story? Yes, I was doing that. Uh, and then uh, when um, uh, we, uh, my nephew, uh, Ronnie Garcia, was supposed to be the um, book designer and the layout artist. And when he started doing that, he really got very, very sick. He really, yeah, we're very, very sick. So, and that was nice of uh, Beth Parocha to take over. Yeah, so Beth, <laughs> you, you saved the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, Ronnie and 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 my my nephew Ronnie and uh, Beth went to school uh, together at the University of the Philippines. They they they, uh, they studied the fine arts together. Ah, I see. So Beth, you're practically family. <laughs> it's a very colorful book. I like how many different type of um, medium. I feel like there's not just watercolor, there's sketching in there. And uh, so is this in the style of, is this expressive and this is the style of Cecile Guidote um, Alvarez? Is what thank she you. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Um, well, I'm a watercolorist and uh, the, 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 uh, liquid watercolor that I use is really very, very brilliant. So, um, and the, your printing there in the U.S. is is quite very good, and they were able to get the 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 two colors of the pigment. I see. So I'm, yeah, thanks to Ray. <laughs> uh, the the uh, by the way, the book was printed here in. Uh, in it was printed in Waukegan, Illinois. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Because usually, you know, the printing is where you can save a lot of money going to East Asia. Yeah, well, we can do that in the Philippines. It's cheaper. But then the question too is how do I ship the books from the Philippines to to America, that would be very, very expensive. See, we have um, uh, here in America, we can send uh, boxes to the Philippines, very, very cheap. Uh, 
an unlimited weight. So it was much better to have it printed here and then ship it. Uh, it will take maybe three months and it will be cheaper. I see. This There is some other logistics to consider, uh, such as shipping. Yeah, so that's what happens when you have an um, overseas venture, right? Now, yes, and just as Beth, you mentioned that watercolor. Now, usually watercolor is very light and see-through, so I'm very impressed that you could get those uh, strong colors. Brilliant and, colors. Yes. Yeah. Usually we associate that with oil acrylics. Yeah, uh, the watercolor that I use is called uh, liquid watercolor. Uh, it's Ecoline. So it's uh, it it um, comes from uh, the UK. So it's really very expensive as well. And the paper that I use is quite expensive too. It uh, I can only get it in the US. So um, it really comes out very, very brilliant because it's not the usual kind wherein it's either it's cake or it's in the tube. This is really in bottles. So um, that's the kind of pigment uh, 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 that, that gives off the uh, brilliant uh, colors. Yeah. I see. I can see how the paper is very important too because it absorbs that much water. Yes, yes. Well, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about Cecile Giudote Alvarez. Now, who was she? I know she's called the mother of Philippine theater, but tell us more. Cecile, uh, Cecile Giudote Alvarez was my mentor, okay? Uh, the problem with the Philippine theater then, it was uh, dominated by English plays written by foreigners. I'm talking about early 1960s. Uh, and then, uh, and even if Filipino, uh, Filipino playwrights wrote, they wrote in English because that was the language of the elite and the educated. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, I think it's still, English is still one of the official languages of Philippines, no? It, it was. Uh, well, it, it has always been, okay? Um, it, you know, we were ruled by the Spaniards, but uh, they never taught the, the Filipinos how to speak Spanish because they learned from uh, Latin America that if you teach the natives how to speak the language, they, can, they could rebel against them. Okay, so they only taught the rich people. Okay, but we have uh, uh, common words uh, in Spanish like baño, cocina. And then um, on top of that, we have maybe uh, 800 languages in the Philippines, 7,100 oh. islands. So, which language is broken? Yeah, <laughs> so, so, but. Uh, Cecil Girote Alvarez is, uh, studied theater uh, at, at, at the Trinity University in Texas, and she trained at the Dallas uh, Theater Center. When she came back, she said, we need a national uh, theater here in the Philippines. And uh, it was an uphill battle, battle battle. You know, people said it would never happen, but he, he, she was really determined to do that. So the, uh, in uh, 1970, uh, he asked UNESCO to send uh, uh, a Czech playwright, uh, Ladislav Smolcek, uh, to train, uh, uh, to teach playwriting and directing in, uh, in Manila. I was 15 years old when I, uh, when I enrolled in his class, okay? And then I, uh, a few months later, I submitted my first play. It was called Tatlong Manika or Three Dolls. And it's, it was staged by, um, uh, by the Philippine Educational Theater Association. Okay. Because, you know, uh, that was the part of the playwrights development program. If you want to have uh, Filipino plays, then you should have, uh, train uh, Filipino playwrights. Yeah. And then, uh, Ray, help us imagine this. Was it in English? What language was it in? My play was in uh, in Tagalog. Uh, in Tagalog, uh, is that, that... Uh, Tagalog is the the basis of the national language. Okay. 
they, they called it Filipino now. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was in Tagalog. And then a few months, uh, a few months later, I also wrote Convention of Mga Limao. It's um, uh, uh, the, the, the English title is A Monster's Convention. Uh, I, I satirized the uh, delegates to the Philippine Constitutional Convention. And, and for that play, I won third prize. I was, well, I wrote it when I was 16, but when I won, I was 17. I placed third. Uh, in the Carlos Palanca Memorial Awards. That's like the Pulitzer Prize in the Philippines. Oh, it's, that's quite an honor. And also, it's- I think uh, I was one of the youngest uh, winners at that time, if not the youngest. <laughs> yeah, well, that yeah. is quite an accomplishment. And also um, to know Cecile in person, that must give you a certain yeah, um, storytelling technique in the book. Oh, okay. Um, now, when I uh, when I wrote uh, the, my first uh, children's book was uh, Balisteros on My Mind, uh, which is about me growing up by the sea in the Philippines. Yeah, uh, so I, I have always wanted uh, biography, uh, even when when I was a child. I like reading other people's lives. Okay, I also like uh, reading obituaries because that's a biography too. Okay, it's, it's <laughs> people's lives. Yeah, okay. But um, I have always wanted to write something about her because, you know, for her to to be the mother of Philippine theater and for her to be a woman and to be, be able to accomplish this. And she, she affected the, the whole Philippines, not only in the theater, television, and the movies, okay? So um, I, 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 I really focus on her. And, um, and then what I like to is, you know, because it's, it's about theater and then I could um, involve a lot of the uh, customs and traditions in the Philippines. In the yeah, book. I see that this book is written in both languages. It's both in English and Tagalog. So can you explain why uh, you yeah why you chose to these two languages i'm sure there's right many languages to choose from yeah um when i wrote balisteros on my mind it was in four editions it was in english uh spanish uh tagalog and ilocano that, that's another language in the philippines so i said i cannot do four editions uh this time you know uh, that's that's very very ambitious okay so uh, i made it bilingual uh, uh, to uh, widen the market with just uh with one just ad addition yeah right it's good to know that you learn from your past publications so this every book you're learning from your past so ray um why did you choose a picture book format though is this to bring um, a wider audience well, I, I really want to uh, uh, to target the uh, the children, the children, yeah. Uh, age. Yeah, uh, children, um, maybe from five to eight, uh, ages five to eight. Uh, you must remember that I, I was a uh, uh, I was a special ed teacher. Right, I do. <laughs> so I have worked with children. Yeah. Right, but this would be something that parents or adults would read to them. Oh yes, yes, of course, yeah. I mean, who buys the books? Uh, but the the parents, yeah. So I hope they found something good in it, and uh, they're going to purchase the book. I see. And Beth, let's talk about your contribution, and can you explain your creative process in illustrating a children's book? Now, did did Ray tell you that the audience was for a five to eight year old? I mean, is that part of what uh, the intention and the design? Yes, it did. Um, I've been a picture book illustrator uh, for around 30 plus years now. And um, somehow when he gave me the manuscript, um, I was able to internalize enough to make some uh, a dummy of it, sketches. And when I showed it to Ray, he said, OK, that's fine. And um, so I did the final artwork uh, after that. Um, well, I tried to um, 
I try to look at the manuscript in such a way uh, uh, that I'll be able to find the story uh, with which the, the my reader will be able to relate to it. Um, so uh, I'm I'm so glad that it's about theater and the Philippine uh, streets um, because of uh, like fiestas and and such because uh, in the Philippines it's such a big it's it's such a big thing uh, those festivals and uh, we as a people um, we really we really take part in it. And um, so I was able to uh, get uh, from the start, I was able to get what, what Ray was trying to intend for the book, how, how it would appear. And um, so you visualize, yeah. yeah, the crowd and Visually, the people. Yes. Lots yes. of activity. I definitely see that in the book. It's just like a dance or people are are um, moving in this book as really yeah. nice um, momentum if you can see that the, the uh, Yvonne I would like to add that the western concept a uh, concept of theater it has to be on stage okay uh, but in the Philippines and in other places it happens on the street okay uh, you know, like we have comedy. processions we have fiestas uh, and this is really apparent um, during uh, the Holy Week because mm -hmm. there are rituals and traditions that uh, we do that. Uh, we have the nightly processions and, at, uh, and uh, on Easter Sunday, we have angels coming down from heaven, taking off the veil of the Virgin Mary. And so I focused on that and to make, to make it appear, mm -hmm. uh, to establish that the real Philippine theater happened uh, happens in the streets where everybody uh, can participate. Yes. Outside and out, yeah, outside space where everybody yeah. is. Yeah, so let me see your, how many pages is this book? Is it a standard 30 some thing? Um, it's 36 pages. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's a standard uh, number of pages for a children's book. That's children's picture book, yes. Yeah. And, and this is your first time illustrating a picture book biography? I, I mean, you, you have so many, you know, 30 some years of experience. So I'm surprised. This is the first time, yes. Yeah, <laughs> and to... and uh, yeah. Beth has yeah. always read, uh, written for the early readers. Uh, for the yes. early readers, yeah. Yes. And also let me add this, that Beth did the, uh, did the illustrations uh, by hand, okay, okay. Now a lot of illustrators uh, do it uh, digitally, and the bad news is even the AI or the artificial intelligence is doing the illustrations now. Mm -hmm. So it's a treasure that uh, Beth uh, has these uh, uh, illustrations, uh, artisan. Uh, illustrations, <laughs> yeah, and the manuscripts, like the uh, the drafts of the uh, of the book, and the uh, illustrations, uh, we donated them to the uh, children's center, uh, mm -hmm. lit uh, children's lit uh, literature center of the University of Minnesota at Minneapolis. So it will be there for future researchers. Wonderful. That is, uh, I'm sure that I will inspire many other works in in this fashion okay. oh, this, yes and then you're also the what does the book cover designer Beth? yes i i did the design as well the layout everything because um the uh, the one who's supposed to do it like what ray said uh, has been sick so so i did everything uh, on the book from the illustrations to the layout to the uh, uh, which uh, what font to use. Um, yes, I did all. Things. That's a lot of decision making. <laughs> <laughs> and always, I'm glad I pulled it off. My <laughs> so that's a, okay. So I see that the book cover is a very asymmetrical. 
asymmetrical design. Is there some meaning behind that or? No, it's just that uh, I wanted a book cover that would uh, readily uh, get the attention of my readers. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that the colorful mask uh, would would be that, uh, what you call this, would, would be able to do that. And, um, and I just uh, tried to put everything together without thinking of the symmetry or anything. I just, I just. Uh, yeah, the, the mass everything. is very, very theatrical. So, yeah. uh, and then that's the mass in the uh, Marianos festival. That, that's a Roman soldier mass. Wow. Uh, that uh, happens during, uh, that is, uh, uh, they uh, do the Marianos festival on the island of Marinduque uh, during the Holy Week. Wow. Uh, See, there's so much yeah, to learn a play uh, that's being uh, done in the streets like like what the title says i see and that's a lot of cultural references such a rich book thank you and for and for a book that's bilingual beth did you have to make sure how the text will fit on both pages or did you have to tell ray to to cut back on words <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, the 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 words that uh, the manuscript is quite just right um, on the word count, so I was able to fit it all in, yeah, without having to ask Ray to to uh, cut some words. It it all fits in. Ray, I see that your book is ready for the Philippines and English speaking market. Do you have other plans to? bring your book further out for a cultural exchange? Uh, I, I, I went home to the Philippines uh, uh, this past March, and I was able to connect with the uh, National uh, Library. Uh, it was like a, um, a uh, semi-book launch there, and it was nice to have the book launch uh, at the National Library of the Philippines. And there was a program and other things, and that was really nice. That's great. So you have plans for sending your book further on outside of Philippines and the English speaking world? As of now, no. <laughs> As of now, no, okay. Uh, I, I, I just went there and uh, let us see if there are other uh, things that will come up, yeah. Well, do you have other plans for another book? Maybe. <laughs> if ever I, I do another book, I think I'll do it with, uh, with Beth again. Uh, I think so. the, 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 there might be, there's something brewing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have great partnership and creativity that is just, can stop with just one book, I can tell. But, but what finally I, I found interesting in uh, Beth, uh, what she told me is she, as much as possible, she doesn't really read the text because she, she, she doesn't want to be bogged down by that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's wonderful, you know, because the, the illustrations, illustrators have their own world. They, they don't have to rely on the text every time. Yes, and, the and children, it turned out beautifully, yeah. We imagine your five-year-olds would definitely be captivated by the pictures and they can follow the story that way. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank Maraming you. salamat, thank you very much for having us. Maraming salamat. <laughs> yes, and especially joining us all the way from Manila, Philippines. And thank you for watching. Join us next time on Off the Shelf.